Okay, rule number two about street photography. If it's stormy, raining, windy, you get outside and you go shoot. I have been a photographer for many years now, but I've never really figured out this whole street photography thing. I documented my first attempt at this a few months ago and came to the conclusion that I just suck at street photography. My intention that day was really just to photograph people. I think that's the main fear that a lot of introverted photographers like myself have when they think about the idea of street photography. Pointing a camera at someone is often met with weird looks or questions, confrontation, and that's usually the block that keeps someone from going outside and trying to improve at all this. That was the discomfort for that day. Today, I've decided to put myself in an uncomfortable situation in a bit different way. Waiting for the weather to be rainy, windy, and cold, I decided to pack up my camera gear and see what kind of failures I could learn from this time around. Now, the idea behind going out when the weather was poor is just based off of the general photography idea that when the weather is bad, you should go out and shoot. It creates a nice break from the general day-to-day -day weather you might experience, allowing for some unique photos that others maybe have not had a chance to take before. Something as simple as someone carrying an umbrella with the rain falling down, or possibly a reflection, there's lots of dynamic subjects that might be new to the scene, and these can help carry some of the weight for a beginner photographer to create an interesting image. So as I got out there and started taking pictures, most of the earlier shots ended up being of buildings, architecture, things that are usually a little bit more comfortable. Just like anything, it takes a little bit to warm up, try and build up that confidence with some easier pictures so that way you can go to really what you want to be taking later on in the day. I think there were some opportunities for like some interesting colors. There were lots of leaves kind of falling on the ground along the streets and even just something as simple as like a red railing or a colorful sign that you can mix a subject with can allow for a nice image. Now I know there's a lot of street photographers that have this strong stance that every good street photography image has to have a person in it. Whether you believe that or not, I still think it's important if you're not comfortable enough to go up to a person and take the image that you really want, to start slow and build that confidence with something like a nicely framed building photo or, or something that can show off the textures and bring that feeling of what the environment is like around you into an image. And I would say in total, I was outside taking pictures for maybe an hour. Obviously a lot of this with street photography is just kind of walking around, seeing what you see along the way not just like snapping the shutter for 60 minutes. But there's been times where I've gone out before and I don't really get past that warm up stage. I take a few pictures and I'm not really feeling it after 30 minutes and so I call it. And this time I really wanted to sit in kind of that discomfort of both the weather and the environment of being a street photographer. And so I warmed up, I, I really wasn't feeling it, but I stayed out there and eventually I kind of started to get a groove a little bit and even though these photos aren't something that should necessarily be printed or they're not going to win any awards, it felt like a step in the right direction for my personal street photography journey. And there's some images that when I got back and edited them, I've, I felt good about. And I think in the end, that's really what I was looking for. Not a perfect day, not necessarily a perfect image, but something I can look back on and say, that image feels good for this reason and this reason. And one of those that I really liked was of this parked car that I walked past. It had these nice leaves just kind of resting on it that had fallen. I tried a couple with the shutter much faster and even some with nothing in the background, but I wanted to convey some of that movement. There was the road right beside it. And so I decided to wait for a little bit, bump that shutter way down and try and capture some of that car moving in the background. And again, this is far from a perfect image something that could be improved on in many different ways, but it felt like something I had warmed up to and I liked the end result. Sometimes I think about all these fun photography techniques and ideas and I see other people utilize them in videos, but when I'm out on the street, it's, it's easy to just kind of freeze and your mind goes blank. You're not really sure what to shoot or how to shoot it. So it was fun to be in this moment and feel comfortable enough to think through my photography process 
and wonder how could this image be better. Instead of that fast shutter shot, I waited a second and just kind of sat there as people walked by, gave me looks, wondering what I was doing, but sat there for a minute and tried to grab a better picture. And then again, as I forced myself to stay out longer than I typically do, I just happen to see more, which I just think is normal. I encourage you, if you're going out, stay out 10, 20 minutes longer than you normally do, even to just walk around. You don't have to take any pictures, but see if there's anything else you can see. A lot of street photography is just being at the right place in the right time. And the more you're out, the more you're walking around, the higher probability that that will happen. One of the shots I like that's a good example of this is of a person changing the letters on a sign. I was able to be on the side where they couldn't see me, making it a much more comfortable situation for myself. And I think it's just kind of a fun image. I'm not exactly sure why. You can't really see their face. There's a little mystery there. And it's kind of a fun act that not everyone gets to see. Sometimes we just show up and the signs are changed and we never see how. And then because of the rain, there were some nice fun subjects and frames I was able to find. There's something about an umbrella that always feels kind of like a fun photo to grab if you can get a good frame around it. And then there were some nice shadows and kind of that gloomy feeling just because of the atmosphere and when I chose to go out. And so overall, I, I think it was a success. There were definitely some things that I wish would have gone better. I think it's always easy to wish you would have taken more photos of people or stopped in a specific moment you remember. Maybe there's a photo you thought you wanted to take but just weren't comfortable enough to take it and you're mulling on that as you get back. But all of these reps are just practice and not only does warming up help in the moment and get your confidence up in that specific session, but the more and more of these as you do, your confidence will start to build. So street photography tip for this video, if you're trying to improve, if you're already a pro, if anything, when the weather is bad, get out and shoot. There's always something exciting to see. If you're interested in seeing more of my street photography process, more videos are to come. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.